This time on CarCraft Video, we are here in Vista, California at Holmes Fabrication. We're going to be working on the 65 Dodge Coronet, getting it ready for roadkill nights. This is Corey Holmes from Holmes Fabrication. Corey, you know this car. It belongs to somebody that's uh, a here. good friend of yours. One of the guys I work with, Kendall Hart here, he came home from the hospital when he was a baby in this car. It's his father's car, Lynn Hart's. We're gonna put a 440 bottom end in it with a cross ram intake. It's gonna look really cool. It's kind of an ode to one of my mentors, Tom Hoffman, who does a lot of nostalgia super stock racing. This is gonna be a lot of fun for me. Not a huge Mopar guy, me neither. but uh, I do love them. They're just, you know, Mopars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they rack up the money pretty quick, but we're gonna do some simple things, some true down to the roots, hot rod stuff for this car. That's gonna be awesome. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna be working with Amazon throughout this build, and uh, Amazon's cool because you can basically restore a car, outfit a shop. Oh yeah. We ordered a lot of stuff from Amazon. Actually kind of surprised, cylinder heads from Amazon. We got a paint booth coming from Amazon. It's inflatable. We usually paint in the barn, drop tarps. This time we're gonna have a nice clean painting area. No bugs in there, it'll be really nice. We got a lot of work to do before Roadkill Nights in Detroit, so we better get started. Yeah, let's get going. <laughs>In 1969, the 70 Challengers were just coming out with the pistol grip shifter and the, I was looking at a 340 with a six pack and the uh, finance fee was gonna be $1,000 and I go, wow, you know, $4,500, that's a lot of money for a car. And I looked out on his parking lot and here was this white 65 Dodge. Black interior, black buckets, Hurst four speed, 383. And I go, what do you want for this? And he said, to you, $1,000. I said. I'll take it. Within about three or four months of buying the car, I wound up with orders to Vietnam. And I figured uh, back then, if you went to Vietnam, you usually didn't come back in one piece or come back. And so I kind of wrote it off, I guess. And I made it back and the car survived. Then I'd been reading Hot Rod for a year while I was in Vietnam. There wasn't much to do other than load bombs for the Air Force and, and read Hot Rod. And so that's what I did. So I was ready to go to work on the car. And so I. I built the motor up uh, to the, within that year. I had a 383 that was putting out over 400 horsepower to the flywheel. The other side of that coin is the gas crisis hit in 73, and this was only making eight to 10 miles to the gallon, which wasn't really good. One of the things we're reading Hot Rod and reading other magazines, one of the things I'd always dreamed about was turbocharging a six cylinder motor. So I got the six cylinder and this has a ISKI cam and an Offenhauser manifold and the 390 Holley on the side. It was pretty, pretty good and made 20 miles to the gallon, so that worked really well. I never did get to the turbocharger on the car, but uh, it's, it's there ready to go if we ever get another opportunity to do something like that. The last time I drove it was in 09. I worked for the military at Camp Pendleton, and uh, I had actually volunteered to uh, go to Iraq. A friend of ours and my son, we did a little work on it and started it up. We actually drove it around town and then parked it just before I went to Iraq. And uh, it just really deteriorated down over the years. Everybody would say, oh, my dad, oh, my dad. It's almost like a default. Of course he deserves it. He's my father type thing. But I think if you knew him on a, on a personal level, He's just very humble, uh, very giving, very caring. Doesn't really matter who you are, what you are, he'll have a conversation with you. <laughs> Today I'm really excited and just uh, blessed by the whole operation that people want to invest in this project. So it's, it's really neat. Yep, keep going. So what we're gonna do right now is we're taking the hood off. It's way easier to work without the hood. Then we're gonna start taking apart all of our attaching systems or cooling. This is a manual steering car, which a Chrysler manual steering box is a beautiful thing. So we don't have to take anything off for power steering lines. Anything vacuum in there, brake booster off, and we're gonna clear out this engine bay. Connor will go around marking everything. Probably take the transmission out first. You can drop the full drivetrain out the bottom of this car, but we need it to roll for paint. We'll pull the engine from the front up and out. We'll start de-trimming it. We'll start taking the interior and glass out of the car. 
We're getting after all the bolts in this fender to take it off and assess the damage to the windshield wiper cowl here in this corner and just get an idea of how much we have to recreate. It feels super attached. It does. There it there is. There it is. Whew. You're just waiting to show us that trick? <laughs> we'll watch us struggle a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this whole thing up to that lip is going to need to get redone. But oh, yeah. we'll try to salvage as much of this as possible. Uh, that, yeah. So we have something to go off of. Challenge accepted. I'm glad it didn't go down any farther. It stopped on this ridge right here, which is going to make it a lot easier to work with. If it went down any farther, that's going to be yeah, way so more right in depth, here. yeah. Got the transmission all loaded up. We're gonna drop it off at the proctologist. He rebuilds all of our rear ends, all of our transfer cases, and all of our transmissions. So he's gonna tear this apart, check it out, see what's going on inside, and make sure it's good. Wash it off, buddy. I knew, did I not say this? He was, he was gonna be mad we didn't clean it. <laughs> What he's gonna do right now is he's gonna open it up and tell us what he uh, thinks the condition of it is. Then we'll know what parts we need to buy and he'll make it like new again. You can see the size of the gears in these things. The 33 is a very, very strong transmission. But the teeth are all wonderful. Yeah, they look pretty good. You can see any missing anything. Look at the oil. Look at the oil. The oil is clean. When's the last time you opened up a tranny like this and the oil was clean? Basically, the rebuild kit and uh, gaskets if they got it. All right, yeah, you got it. We will look it up on Amazon. Uh, Amazon has everything. Yeah, they, they really do. They <laughs> really do. <laughs> I don't have a computer, but that's what people tell me. <laughs> Normally you can hear cars as they pass, I can smell it as it passes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I brought some purple power, we'll start soaking her down. Oh nice, that's gross. Let's try to get the back seat up. Let's do it. No time like now. There it is. Oh, there's a baby right there. Live. Oh, there's a couple babies alive there. It's pretty bad. I feel like you get to a point where it's just like you can't get any worse. Like, I don't know. A smell is a smell. It gets to the point where you just can't smell anymore. Yeah, no, I can't even smell. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a couple I'm weeks to recover. smell phase. Yeah. All right, now that we've got the car torn apart and we got some of the guys outside, they're sanding and uh, prepping it for paint. This is our uh, max wedge intake that we got. This is a repop that ANA Transmissions makes. It is a beautiful piece. There's nothing like seeing those two carburetors spread. But we went and got a valley pan gasket. It's not necessary to run this with the setup that we're running. We ordered one in case we needed to run a valley pan gasket. But what we're doing right here is we're going to port match. We already took this over to our cylinder head and we made sure that the intake ports on the cylinder had matched perfectly. Now we came over here to see kind of how far off we were, and we've got quite a bit of metal to take out of there. We're not porting deep into the throat of the intake. We're not trying to take a whole bunch of material out. We just want to make that transition good, because anytime air hits a ledge, a wall, or steps off of a ledge, it creates turbulence in that air, and that turbulence effectively narrows down the path for the air to flow into the cylinder head. So what we've got here is a very old can of Dicom Steel Blue layout fluid. We're just gonna spray it on here. We're gonna take the pick and we're gonna scratch our area. Then we're gonna have Kendall, who I've deemed the human mill, come over here and work this in. It's gonna idle better, the air's gonna flow better. It's just gonna be a much, much smoother running engine. And we just wanna give Lynn the best possible outcome for this. And I think Kendall being able to work on this gives him a little bit of pride and ownership of something that was built for his father. And I think that'll be great.
So right now we're getting the car uh, down to bare metal. We started out using uh, a lot coarser grit stuff. It's been repainted before, but it wasn't taken down to bare metal before that happened. So there's multiple layers of paint, so we're skimming off most of the nitty gritty stuff before we come back over with 80 grit and get it nice and consistent for primer. A lot of guys like to get it sandblasted. It's very cost effective, super quick to do. But the biggest problem that I have with sandblasting is the sand. You can never get all of it out. No matter how hard you try, you can, you can blow the car out for hours at a time. But when you come down to spray it, you could always possibly hit a little pocket that you've missed and blow that uh, sand right onto the paint. That's what we're trying to avoid. But once these guys are all done, kind of getting all the big stuff kind of taken down, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with 80 grit and get it all ready for primer tomorrow. These are some Meadowbrock Performer RPM heads, 6082s. We sourced these on Amazon. They had them in stock. I'm pretty sure I pressed send and I woke up in the morning and they were sitting on my doorstep. If you notice the pan, the bolts have pulled these up into a nice little hump right here. We're gonna go through and straighten them with this ball peen. We're just gonna hit kind of around the edge if it goes a little past, that's fine. The bolt will pull it back. You just don't want it to be sitting here and not sealing on the pan rail itself. Big blocks are a workout. Yep. All right, we've already poured some oil into the engine here, but we're using our Ultra Platinum 530 synthetic. It has a high load additive package in it. It's gonna be great for our roller lifters and our high spring rates that we have on our valve springs. I, I like to pour it down the center anytime I can, which usually almost never, but that way we can get some lube on the camshaft before we get going. All over the lifters in the valley, and we know we're coating everything. All right, we're gonna test fit these valve covers. Keep them on there to keep the dust out overnight. We are gonna have to mask this engine off. We're gonna paint it in what we consider the proper color, which is up for debate. We gotta paint the car that's out back, put the suspension back under it, get it up running, driving, and wired. And then we gotta watch Lindy burnouts. Lots of burnouts. Lots yeah, of burnouts. But, but that's a pretty sizable list of things you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> you get Quite done a before roadkill night. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I'm liking the progress we've made so far. This is really good. Uh, the, the car is basically most of the paint stripped off. It's ready for the, the paint booth. The boys really ripped on it. It's no. down to bare metal. I can't wait to see the, the inflatable paint booth. Oh, Personally, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited I can't about wait. that. I bet Connor's excited about that. <laughs> and then I'm loving, I mean, even just not painted, I'm liking the way this there is looks. There is nothing like this. No, no. You know, if you didn't know Hot Rods, right. and you walked through a car show, and you right. saw a whole bunch of single carbs, yeah, yeah. duels in a row, and you yeah. came across this thing, yep. Bright orange in an engine bay, I think you'd you'd probably look twice. <laughs> at least this, at least twice, yeah. This will bring a smile to your face. I know Lynn's gonna love it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a conversation starter if you're at a car show and you pop mm -hmm. the hood. People are gonna be wondering. So I hope you're liking our build so far, 65 Coronet that we're getting ready to take to Roadkill Nights. Thank you to Amazon for all their help so far in this build. Be sure to check out all our progress on hotrod.com. We'll be doing articles on the website. Also, Hot Rod's Instagram and Facebook pages, and we'll see you at Roadkill Nights. Don't ever put purple power on aluminum. Bad idea. No aluminum for purple power. I mean, I guess you could if you wash it off immediately, but uh, nope, Fozzie says don't even do that. <laughs>